Jane Lowe and I'm here on site in Orchard Road, the uh, shopping district of Singapore. And with me, I'm very privileged and very pleased to have Anthony Lim, who is the Cybersecurity Governance and FinTech Fellow of SUSS, which stands for Singapore University of Social Sciences. So thank you, Anthony, for joining us today. Good morning, Jane. Thank you. Yes, I'm very privileged to be here. Yes, and sorry about the mouthful of the uh, title. <laughs> no problem, no problem. Uh, so, Anthony, today you'll be sharing with us uh, some of your thoughts about Web3. And we decided to have this conversation after, of course, your, um, your presentation and participation at the panel uh, last year in July, Web3 in Singapore. Um, so it has been six months since then, so obviously there's had been a lot of development, so really keen to get your thoughts on that. But before we start, maybe we should just uh, you know, clarify what we mean by Web3, because many different people have different ideas. And I thought, given your background as a cybersecurity expert and also governance and also fintech, we can maybe talk about the difference between Web3 and Web2 from perhaps two important pillars. So from a... Um, Governance perspective, what is the difference? Um, people say decentralization and all that. Um, and then also from a, perhaps from an infrastructure point of view, because you are IT experts. So yeah, so tell us what is the difference between Web3 and Web2? All right, thank you, Chin. Well, first of all, uh, your question <laughs> itself poses a lot of disclaimers. And number one, um, from the infrastructure point of view, just because we're an IT expert um, does not mean that we know everything because Web3 is seriously new. I mean, if you understand the OSI 7 layers, uh, we have this joke that Web is uh, layer 8 and Web3 is effectively layer 9. Okay, So if you, those of you who understand the OSI 7 layer, mm -hmm. <laughs> we'll let you deal with that. Again, from the government, governance point of view, um, seriously, uh, it's early days. We're not there yet. We're still struggling with a governance of crypto, let alone Web3. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and even governance of blockchain, if any. Mm -hmm. uh, but the point is that, again, cybersecurity <laughs> and governance is not the correct background to talk about Web3. Let me explain why. Okay, first of all, basically, what's this Web3 thing about? Let me oversimplify, okay? And uh, in about 20, 30 years ago, the internet started, and of course, the whole the main interface and the whole main activity uh, sphere was the web. And then after that, um, that was Web1. And then... Um, you know, basically what happened was that the governments and for that matter, governance and mm. regulations started to control privacy and protection and cybersecurity. And then some people didn't like it. They found it was too hard and too stifling and too, mm. you know, uh, against creativity. So Web2 came out. Okay, Web2 was also technologically and functionally more advanced than Web1. Although basically Web2, as you can imagine, is an evolution of Web1. And then what happened? Then the big boys try to control it. You, know, you have Google, you have Facebook, you have infrastructure and software and environment pro providers, and then, and then cloud started to come in. And again, people didn't like it because you know, I got away from Web 1 to Web 2. You know, I got away from government control, and now we have the mm -hmm. Amazons and the Facebooks and Microsoft and the Googles trying to tell me what to do. So now we have come up with a more advanced, even technologically, environment called Web 3. Web 3 is where you know, we are self-governing based on the community uh, governance uh, platform and infrastructure known as blockchain. So, you know, we own our privacy, we own our security, and no one's going to try and tell us what to do. So it's kind of utopian. But given that free, living, rich environment, you can therefore be have, have that creativity that we wanted. So in one breath, long breath, uh, that is uh, basically an oversimplified uh, description of a Web3 vis-a-vis -vis Web2 and for the matter Web1. Yes, many people say that Web1 is very superficially, um, is a read-only web, and then Web2 is read and write, and then Web3 is read, write and own, as you uh, yes, refer read, to write, it. own, and for that matter, create. And create as well. Later on uh, in this conversation, the contrarian in me will come out again and spoil it. <laughs> ah, right, okay. Yes, so we, we uh, will come to that in, I think, very, very shortly. Um, now, uh, so given this uh, sort of uh, uh, setting the ground in terms of what we mean by Web3, now looking at uh, what has developed in the last six months in this blockchain world, and many people say, oh, Web3 is kind of like blockchain. Some people train the metaverse and, you know, but irregardless, what, given your definition of Web3, in the last six months, obviously we've seen like FTX explode and collapse, right? Um, That's got nothing to do with Web3, but never mind. Uh, right, yes, so exactly. So <laughs> okay, tell okay. us, yes, Sorry. so tell us, you know, what, 
are the developments in Web3 and what are the misconceptions when we talk about developments in Web3? Like you say, FTX got nothing to do with Web3. Okay, well, first of all, uh, <clears throat> blockchain, okay, it isn't, a, isn't is, it is and isn't about blockchain. Blockchain is the platform, it's the basic building block on which cryptocurrency is based, on which Web3 is based. And, um, you know, I haven't figured this out yet mm -hmm. on which meta is may or may not be based. But basically, Web3 is based on blockchain and blockchain is that, you know, community, public, you know, uh, ledger, self-governing um, environment, mm -hmm. which is the basis for Web3. So anyway, and if you see that, uh, if, if you take blockchain as a self-governing model, then again, FTX uh, would be a very bad example. <laughs> right, yes, yeah. Obviously, um, there's a, uh, I think one of the, point or rather one of the reasons why you may have hold opposite view is uh, I think you also referred to it during your July sort of conference uh, you talk about how although we strive to be decentralized in this web tree world right. we are not there yet because there's still a lot of components that are centralized and when it comes to FTX we look at the governance for example it's quite centralized and that's possibly one of the reason uh, that led to it collapse because some a lot of the decision making and the way that they decide the policy to you know manage customer assets are quite still quite centralized and not decentralized so that may be one aspect of uh, it's um, uh, it's collapse. Well, if you talk about FTX and its collapse for a while, the the, the management or non-management or mismanagement of FTX was centralized. Correct. But uh, there was basically no governance, okay, at all, okay. And they found out after the fact why did this happen, and they found that if you read all the reports, uh, basically mm -hmm. there was no governance. Uh, that's why uh, FTX died. But let's not make this an FTX conversation. Mm. No, let's come back to. Web3 still needs to, needs to sit on an infrastructure that basically isn't far off from Web2 and for that matter, Web1. You still need the, uh, you know, the, the wires and the pipes and the switches and the data centers and, and the servers. So mm -hmm. all that hasn't changed. So the problem becomes who owns all that? Okay, we didn't want government telling us what to do. We didn't want Microsoft or, or Google telling us what to do. But... So now we have this new self-governing environment, but where's the infrastructure coming from? Where's the electricity coming from? And, and, and so on. And who's writing the software and who's owning all this? And therefore, some level of governance is going to come in. Some level of ownership is going to come in. And like what I alluded to at the conference last year, that's where the problem is. Okay, let me spoil this whole thing for you, okay? And my professor, David Lee, is going to be quite unhappy about this. Uh, human beings are by nature selfish and greedy so in the blockchain world we're all equals we're all brothers and sisters but one morning somebody wakes up and say i want more or a group will decide i want 51 percent now i own the other 49 percent and these kind of things will happen okay somebody you know like uh, you know i thought about the darwinian concept of the evolution of giraffes okay we're all we're all animals one of us will grow a longer neck so we can eat the leaves up there so we don't need to compete with the other animals these kind of things eventually will happen and web3 will fall apart because i shouldn't say this early this <laughs> no web3 is wonderful but web3 now okay so some form of governance will happen and we rather a governance we can trust you know better the devil you know mm. then suddenly some new entity within our blockchain community of formerly equals that comes up and decide that they want to own things okay go read animal farm you know so my view is that then what's gonna happen we're gonna have web 4 okay? <laughs> oh, right. Okay. I think I think there's still some disagreements about what Web three can do and what it means. So before mm -hmm. we solve that, no, uh, well. I'm just kidding. But Web three can do a lot, and Web three is a very very ripe environment for development and creativity. Mm. So it's the ownership issue and the governance mm. issue that's uh, going to be a bit complicated because uh, at some point in time there will be some entity that wants to play big brother or boss mm, mm, mm. yeah game theory uh, plays a very big part in I think this blockchain world because there's a lot more um, ways that you can manipulate the well the com community given you know it's all decentralized uh, compared to say uh, the world that we have today centralized uh, sort of world uh, it's harder to 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 adopt a game theory approach uh, to competitiveness because then you have to be a rather big player 
right? Well, um, but there's more chance if you're a small player in the blockchain co community mm -hmm. to actually uh, adopt a game theory approach. Yeah, to cut off your little corner. In fact, it's very funny that uh, when you're saying, talking about game theory and competitiveness, I start thinking of parents and the kids going to primary school and secondary school. <laughs> right, okay, <laughs> yeah, that, right, right. That's a, that's a good uh, example, no, right? <laughs> especially here in Singapore. <laughs> yes, exactly. That's what I thought about. Anyway, so coming back to your point about... Um, about okay, this whole thing about Web three and and creativity and ownership and game theory. So what are we looking for? Why do we have blockchain? Why do we have metaverse? And why do we have Web three? So I start to think about human beings. Apart from creativity, creativity, and also they want self governing and they don't want uh, you know some kind of infrastructural ownership, whether it be the government or some uh, mm. big uh, service providers. Apart from Web three, for that matter, and metaverse. It were already earlier attempts. For example, there's this dark web. So it sounds bad when you think of dark web. You think of drug dealers and guns, and you know, um, you know, and then of course the bad people with ransomware and cryptocurrency. And there's a good argument why people have that negative perception. No, but, but you see, okay, I, let me I shouldn't yes. interrupt you. No, 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 that's <laughs> all right. So I think you know where I'm coming from. And in my innocent, unex unqualified view, dark web didn't start out to be bad. It's dark only because it wanted to be different. It wanted to be private. It wanted the same idea. It wanted to be away from government and governance. But when you have a private, unregulated world, you know, the bad guys start going in, you know, the, the hackers and the cryptocurrencies. And, and what well, crypto itself is not bad, but the abuse of cryptocurrency, it's where the trouble is. It's again, it's like, you know, the Bible says money is the root of all evil. It doesn't mean money is bad. It means basically misuse or misconception or abuse of money or greed of money be makes things become bad. So the same thing. We don't want Web3. We don't want Metaverse to turn into, you know, a, a utopia for, for mm. you know for the mm. bad and the wrong entities and spoil everything yeah I understand what you're saying uh, metaverse on uh, there's had been a lot of discussions about how it had been abused uh, especially Already. to target <laughs> to target children um, but I think that's a huge topic that we can dive into in deeper detail mm. another day but what I want to touch on the point about abuse right um, you brought up a good point you know any technology uh, could start it with good intentions but over time could get abused and I'm just thinking when you're saying that I'm, I was just thinking about emails emails started with good intentions and now we get so much phishing and spam coming from emails so do we say that email is good no but is there's still a lot of good use to it right so it requires um, regulation governance and of course cybersecurity experts like yourself right to teach people and make people aware of some of the uh, things to watch out for so coming to that point, I want to get your insights as a cybersecurity expert. Where are we in terms of Web3 cybersecurity? Well, we're totally not there yet. <laughs> well, the infrastructure is not even uh, completely well, there. So well, we're the rely, the rely a lot. The infrastructure is still Web2 infrastructure. Correct, right, so, on top. No, so, so the point is this. First of all, we need to be able to finish defining Web3 first before we can decide what are the cybersecurity requirements and implementations. But by and large, what happens in the Web3 today, the security issues are basically the same as uh, everything else, whether or not you call it Web3. For example, you know, like authentication and mm. data theft and, you know, um, or, or the other more social issues like faking, you know, you know like, like you're faking the identity or faking the data. So a lot of it, Actually, nowadays, come to think of it, has less to do with cybersecurity itself, again, than actually the governance part. Not that I want to oversell the governance, but for example, phishing. Phishing has nothing to do with technology. So again, it is the abuse of technology rather than the technology itself. Remember, cybersecurity is not just about technology. It's the PPT mantra. People, process, and technology, and people always focus on technology, forget about the people and forget mm. about the process. So Metaverse, Web3, the same. The cybersecurity issues there will be the same as in any other environment, which has a lot to do with the people and the process rather than the technology. That's right, yeah. So, uh, well, obviously, uh, we still have a lot, um, uh, I would say, to develop in this Web3, th this brave new world. Because we, it has only been, well, Web3, I believe, was coined, the term was coined in back in... 2014, 2015? That's almost a year back, but I think it actually took effect maybe one or two years ago. 
Oh, yes, yes, yeah. So we are really, really early days in the technology development and adoption. I think we still got that case and that case before mm -hmm. we actually come to this, realize whether we can, you know, arrive at this utopian vision yes, that we want to, you know. Yes, is the world ready, okay? The technology is there, it's the world, it's a metaverse, the same thing. And now that you mentioned danger of abuse and, you know, for example, of, you know, trying to trick the kids and all that, now we have problem because there was, what is the next thing? Governance will step in and try That's to right. regulate the metaverse. Right, mm -hmm. yes. Yeah, I think, I think you know, uh, technology where it can be abused, we do require a third, well, a neutral third party in this case, a uh, government. Yes. To right to enforce, well, to set policies and yes. enforce the policies. So we're right, right back where we started. Um, yeah, in some ways, right back where we started. But we'll see whether maybe there will be a new way of governance. I don't know. True. And in fact, yes, you're right. The governments are struggling, are meeting, are discussing, are brainstorming to see how do we have these new ways of governance to meet the new world, to meet the millennial world mm. and to meet you know, the world of the metaverse and the Web3 and all that. And in speaking of a metaverse, in fact, uh, let me spoil this. I think I mentioned this before. You talk about metaverse, it's very exciting, but those of you who have kids who, you know, back then the kids who were teenagers, they played like Neopets and Maple Story mm. and RuneScape. Isn't this kind of a kids early version of the what we have as Metaverse today played by adult professionals? Mm, mm, mm. Yeah, I think a lot of the technology that we see, you know, had developed. The cons, yeah. yeah. Like there were some people who said that, you know, Google Glasses, the yeah. technology was already there 20 years mm. ago, but it's only been... It was adopted obviously by the military and it's only now been um, you know, um, deployed to Whoa. the mass population. The, the military Google Glasses 20 years ago was probably like the, this size. That's you know, right, that's right. It's a big that's battery right. pack that's right. and a, an antenna. So, it's a very, yeah, so very conceptually it's the same, but you know, uh, functionally it's a lot uh, yeah, better today point. because of technology. Fair mm. point, yeah. So, uh, so coming back to Web3, so we are still in the, at the very, very early days. And if we look at the Gartner chart, Right, um, I, I believe we are sort of at the high, uh, the Gartner chart, chart hype cycle. We are at the sort of the peak of, of uh, you know or innovation, just before the peak, or just yes. before before we fall into this uh, uh, this the mainstream. Right? That's right. <laughs> no, yeah. no, 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 not this mainstream. <laughs> Web three has a lot of promise, and there's a lot of uh, got Professor Lee here. This Web three, I'm saying this Web three has a lot of promise, and I think there's a lot of good things coming up, and a lot of people in the world doing very good things built on Web three. The only thing is, okay, we cannot uh, let it run out of control by some people trying to control it, which was what the whole purpose of Web3 was in the first place, to get away from all this control. Mm -hmm. And that's why they are trying to base it on this, again, community self-governing environment called blockchain. That's right, yeah. It sounds like uh, we should catch up in, I don't know, a, a year's time to see where we are in terms of these uh, developments in governance to trying to make Web3 a more safer place for everybody. Um, True, I think that's the whole point, to make Web3 and for that matter, Metaverse. That's the whole purpose of cybersecurity, you're right, to make these things and this place a safer place for everybody. That, that's a very uh, correct point. Right, okay. So on that note, thank you very much, Anthony, for your time today to share with us your insights and you know, your thoughts about Web3 and where we are and the main challenges. So thank you very much, Anthony. Thank you very much, Jane, and thank you, everybody. I really enjoyed this conversation. Thank All you. All the best, and be safe. Thank you.